Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying with Jim Ashura. Today I'd like to do some talking about and demonstrating uh, tails and tailing materials and how we put them on the hooks. It's something I haven't really covered before, but I'm going to try to go through these. Uh, I'm going to start with the tail. I have one on wings already, but I'll go over that one again. And I'll go over the body, the tail, the body, the wings, and the hackle. And today we're just going to start with the tails. To start with, I'm going to cover the artificial wings and or the artificial tails. And to start off, here we have Hemingways. These are stonefly body and tail. So the tail is already attached to the stonefly body on these. And you would there's a tab on there you can see there and you would tie that in at the tab. But I'm not so much this video isn't so much to show you the specifics of the Hemingways, but here is just Mayfly tails, three tails and there's a big tab right there. So we tie that to the back of the hook and then you have your tails. One popular dry fly tail is micro fibbits. And here we have, and this is just basically an artist's paintbrush. You can see that. It's just basically an artist's paintbrush. They come to a really fine point. And this is a blue done color. They come in several different colors. You could get them in just about any color from fly shops because they'll dye them. But if you go to a an artist shop and pick up a paintbrush, they're, they're a little expensive if you do it that way. This is actually one thing that's probably less expensive at the fly shop than getting the, the real brush or the real product. We have other tail material like we use on pheasant tails we use a pheasant tail for the this isn't a center this is a side from the center but this side over here this is not good for tailing but this over here you can see those you got some stiff ends on there and these would be really nice for tails I like to use these you can see that how it's like a little bit brownish more brown on there and when you get to the top these I don't like these for tails as much but these are great for the body of a pheasant tail but these here you can see the different color there those are great for the pheasant tail bodies and then we get into well here's a substitute for the here is a substitute for the micro fibbits and these are basically paintbrush artificial paintbrush too and these make nice uh, micro fibbits and you can see I have these uh, I used them permanent marker on there and made them gave them some different colors but I did find out I had red and I used red and that marker comes off and it turns white especially on the red one there but these are actually you know these are micro fibbits in itself you can see these are a little bit heavier than the actual micro fibbits and this is a shaving brush you can see and then you get into hackle for dry flies you get into hackle uh, fibers for the tails I'm going to put my vise on the side there a little bit. And this is just a Chinese, it's a nice blue dun color. This is just a Chinese, basically a barnyard neck. And the where, where you get the hackle for the tails from, from things like this, this is a cape, you know, a neck or a cape. You take them from the top where they're very long. And I have one here. 
and you can see the web in there. You get a good pointer here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in more. But here we have, you can see the web. And when you're building a tail, like for dry flies, you don't want that web. You want long, stiff hackles. So these ones on the end here, you can see there's no, there's hardly any web in those uh, feathers there on the end. So these ones on the end are, are good for the tails, the long, stiff ones. And even these here, you know, even though there's a lot of web, you have a lot of stiff spots on the top there. So I would use these, but I would be sure to make sure that I don't have any web showing on my showing out of the thread. You can tie them in at with the soft spots in there, but you want to tie them tie those uh long stiff ones. That's where you want to uh put your most trust on there because if you if you have the web the web is soft and it's going to bend easy so when the fly lands on the water that tail is going to bend and your body is going to uh, dip beneath the surface but if you have it resting on the stiff parts of that uh, hackle then that stiff part is going to hold your fly off the water but that's a blue done one and for stuff like tailing, if you get a barnyard one, these are also good for wings on streamers. Here's a black one. And you can see there's some nice long stiff ones. Take this feather over here. You can see the darker center, that's the web. So all of the other, all of the rest of it is nice long stiff fibers so they would make good tails right there and I have another one and these three are here's a cream one and these three are the barn the barnyard ones and you can see the darker color the dark color is the web so all of that cream color is the good stuff that you would use and keep for the tail and these are also a nice this this particular hackle right here this is also a nice one for streamers too because we get that darker center in there and they're the barnyard ones and here is a good this is a Mets neck and this is a number two neck and you can see so these down here these fed these hackles down here are you know, they're obviously not good because the barbels on there are going to be real small. They're good for the nice, uh, for the real small size 1820s. And even getting in through here, you're still not enough. If you take them and bend them, you're only up to the 14s maybe. you got to get up to the top. So you take the top here. We take one of these feathers. And you can see on here, you can see the web like this down here wouldn't very well wouldn't work very well for the tail because you have you don't have enough stiff but as you're going up you're getting more more stiff fibers and more stiff fibers I don't really want to pluck this off but I'm going to take this and I'm going to stand them up I'm just going to hold that tip and stand some of them out there a little bit more so you can see and they're better for those those there are better for tails but the ultimate the ultimate tail material is Coq de Leon feathers and here is a this is a half of a neck I cut off the other half and gave it to a buddy but I'm going to pull one of these feathers out and show you why these are so nice yep not that one okay and here we have the coq de leon 
hope this stays in focus here but uh here we have the Coq de Lyon and you can see the dark part is the web and from this you have very long I'm gonna go ahead and stand those up I got a whole bunch of them here so if I ruin this one it's not a real big deal but here you can see how very long and stiff those those sections are and this is why the Coq de Lyon is so so good for tying dry fly tails because you get nice you have a nice long stiff fibers there and like I said the long stiff fibers are what holds the dry fly on the surface another tailing material for nymphs is the goose biots they have a little gray one here or the the goose biots are especially are used almost exclusively for showing a stonefly tail and you can see how how stiff they are nice and wide and a pair of these makes the stonefly tail because the stonefly tails are very distinct and split apart so these work really nice for that you use these nice barred feathers and you just use a few of them maybe a half a dozen at the most to give you nice uh, feathers on a, on a fly or on a for a tail for flies like the gold ribbed hares here or any of those uh, other nymphs that aren't the pheasant tail type and then another material that I use on dry flies especially is this is Zelon and this actually makes it look like a shuck and I have a video on tying materials in my materials fly and what I like to use is here's I got this color and this is a braided boot lace that is taken apart I got a nice uh, rusty brownish color for that and uh, they make really great shucks hanging off the back of your dry flies I have a pretty large hook here this is this is like a size 10 dry fly hook but I'm going to do a little demonstrating so I could use that I'm just going to use some yellow thread so we can see it easily and I'm not even going to put a whole base of thread down. I'm just going to start at the back here. And here is the... On dry flies, you stop where the thread hangs at the barb. So first off, we're going to do a little bit of the micro fibbits but I'm not going to use these I don't want to waste them I'm going to use the micro fibbits from the uh, shaving brush we're going to take some and you could do these in a couple different ways you can use them as one or you can take a couple of them you know two single ones if you're tying a small say spinner dry fly spinner rusty spinner or something you could use two and you can split them but I'm gonna just take these here and start and this would just be pretty simple you would you know measure to what size you want that tail to be the length of the body you just simply put those on and tie it down just like you would with anything simply like that but I'm gonna go to the couple I'm gonna take the two I'm gonna actually put these on the side for the moment so now if we want a split wing 
if we want a split wing micro fibbit tail I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing and say just say for instance if this was a an olive I'm going to take a little bit of that olive dubbing it's actually quite a lot for because this is a big hook for demonstration we're going to dub that on there and basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a we're going to build up a a ball right at the tail section there so we just take it and again this is a giant hook that's why there's a lot going on here and then we bring the thread in front of the ball now we take our micro fibbits I'm not gonna actually I'm just gonna grab like two small bunches just so you can see it better and we're gonna put one on each side put that bunch on that side and then take this actually making a little bit of a crisscross here on it and I'll show you it but this ball is going to hold them apart and there we have the tail split you know it's not perfect but it's just a demonstration and you can get those split tails just like that with a single microfibit on each side we're gonna go ahead and take this apart get rid of those get rid of those this making a ball putting a ball on the back is also good when you're doing when you're putting the stonefly goose biot tails so you take them and i go ahead and pop two of them off at the same time putting my finger between the both and then you pop them off now when you go to tie them on that ball is going to hold them apart so I'm gonna go ahead and put my side on first it rolled a little bit just put it over to the side take the second one size it up using the natural curve of the biot and as you pin it and you go closer to the ball that's going to hold them apart a little bit more and you can see there that they're held apart and there you have a nice stonefly tail We'll go to <clears throat> the boot lace, take that boot lace tail and make the shuck tail now. Like I said, I really like these, uh, this material for shucks. You can see it's going to look very much like a shuck. With your shucks, you want wisps of them. With mayflies, you want them a little thicker, but with a caddisfly, you just want a wisp because they're actually clear with an outside, with an outside brown definition on the outside of that shuck. But we're gonna just take that and we're gonna just tie that on top. You would just tie that right in place there, and then instead of having a this uh squared off on the back you can just take your scissors and kind of put a little bit of a taper on it just like so so it's tapered but also with the with the boot lace if you're going to say if you're making a uh an adams parachute you could just take this up to the top and then 
you can use this for your parachute post. And now we'll go to, we'll move on to the barnyard hackle. I know we got that one feather in there. There it is. And here is the barnyard hackle. And first thing, I'm going to just take this fluff off the back here. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to use some off the back here. And I'm use some off the back. And I'm going to show you how that soft hackle would be bad, ex having that soft hackle exposed. You go ahead and pull these off to 90 degree, bunch them all together. And now that back section is the soft hackle. So if we tie these in, and just get this secured. Now if I tie these in and the, the soft hackle is exposed, basically what's going to happen when it lands on the water, these are going to bend. You see how easy these bend up. But if we take this and we bring it to where it's going to be stiff, that stiff section, now all the soft hackle is underneath and you can see how much stiffer this is. It takes a lot more for it to bend and let your body sink. So we don't necessarily want these off these backs, off the back there. We want we want to take it from the front, more from the front where you have a lot more stiff hackle. So I'm just going to go ahead and strip this here and get to the good stuff. Which is basically the tips. And here you can see the tips, there's very, very little uh, web on there. If you look at the top section, a little bit towards the left there, you can see that little bit of web. So I'm going to stand these up again. Just stand them up at the right angle and you line the tips up. Grip it and then pull them all off at the same time. So we have very little web which is easily going to fit onto the shank there and we have nice stiff you can see there we have a nice stiff hackle tail go ahead and take them apart cock de leon feather as soon as if i find it here i have several of them lay in here take this cocktail feather pull a good one big one out so now we have this cocktail feather and obviously this stuff off the back is going to be no good way too much web let me just peel that off just to get it out of our way here So you can see this is still web, web, but you have some nice stiff ones up here still. So we stand them up and then we group them all together in order to get them aligned. And then we can pull them all off at once. And now even here in my hand, you can see the dark is the dark section is the web, the soft web. But you got some nice long stiff even right here for this giant hook that's in here you still got plenty right there and to be able to you know and you got a nice stiff you can see how much stiffer these cockdillion are but another kind of demonstration i'm going to tie it in where the dark section is going to be exposed and you see that that dark section is really really soft 
pull them out there or even a little bit further and when it lands this is so soft it's just gonna it's just gonna fold so the point is to get the really stiff sections it's like this and you can see how stiff they are right there and that's gonna hold your fly on top of the water here is the pheasant tail I'm gonna take some of this pheasant tail and this is basically the same thing this down here is web you can see down here is web and these top tips are, are uh, much stiffer although you it's gonna be an, a nymph so but even with nymphs you want you know for the most part you want that stiff tail because you don't want it folding over and just blowing around like a marabou almost and you get those nice that that nice color there and you get that nice stiff tail that really stands out and is is well defined and uh, other tails of course you have marabou if you're making the woolly bugger and this is actually a, a pretty pretty good pheasant uh, feather to demonstrate like some of them will come out really ratty and you can see that one there like I'm not going to use that <clears throat> but one thing you could do with the marabou is take your little comb and you can with the brush side and you can brush them like for instance this section right right up in here you can see how it's all stuck together you take your comb and brush it it pulls it right apart but with the with the woolly bugger tail you just take a, a group of them you, you usually this this feather isn't as good but usually you pull them off the sides of the feather you don't really want to keep a stem in there and definitely don't want to keep I have a stem in this one but it's a very very blood stem very very skinny so you take that and just tie that on so you don't really want a stem in your you don't want a stem in your woolly buggers and this is soft and it that's the whole purpose of it the woolly bugger it breathes in the water it's going to breathe a lot it's gonna flop up and down add a lot of life to it and so I hope that you learned something from this video I hope that you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends please visit my sponsors leave comments questions suggestions and most of all thank you very much for watching my videos